Hello, everybody. Welcome again. We're here in the garden today. It's a beautiful day. I've already been teaching. Oh, my goodness, most of you have stayed. I believe this is going to be the last lesson in the School of Light, Prayer and Fasting, the Lord's Way. And then we'll be moving on to the next section which I believe is Pastor Deborah had to learn all about the heart of the Father from Isaiah 61 and 62. So let's get into this one. But first, what do we do? Prayer. That's right. Is anybody here? Would you like to open up with prayer? You would? Okay. You go ahead and we'll all just bow our heads. And when you're finished, I'll close it out. Wonderful. Dear Father, we thank you for all these little ones you have brought here today to hear your words of spirit and life, for they are our food and our nourishment to our spirits. We need you, Father. We need your presence with us. We need your words of spirit, of light, of understanding, of wisdom, so that we may grow up and develop our spiritual mind into the very mind of Christ, the anointed King of the kingdom of heaven, your Son, your image and likeness that will inherit all the inheritances of the kingdom that you are holding for us until we grow and develop. We thank you, Father, for this time here in your garden of your pleasure of your pleasure and delight and your presence is with us your holy spirit our teacher is here and your word of spirit and life is here guide us as we end this section of prayer and fasting that you took pastor deborah through so she could learn how to help people your way the lord's way instead of the way of mental health counseling the way of the world the way of darkness and ignorance. Thank you, Father, for all you've done for us. We look forward to you teaching us your heart in Isaiah 61 and 62 so that we can get to know you better, your will and your heart, and why you sent your word and how you help Pastor Deborah to have your heart for humanity. We thank you. In the name of Christ Jesus, the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. All right. In the last lesson, lesson number 17, we did a quick review about when you learn how to get unyoked from those things that oppress you. Thoughts, ideas, pews. Remember my pew story? People, emotions. What's going on in the world? And you get yoked to the Father's heart. You get yoked to His words, His light, and you travel along with Him. And once you do that, and you help to get others unyoked, unoppressed, unreleased from their bondages, not from, from anything, could be food, could be people, could be sports, who knows, could be the past, memories, Titles like victim, from unforgiveness, from bitterness, anything that holds you back. Once you help other people, then you become a rebuilder of the breach, of the separation between God and them. And then you're riding high. He'll put you up high. He'll raise you up with power and authority. And you will be helping other people to fast and pray the Lord's way. And we're going to finish up this section with this. Then, you old spiritual person, you will call and pray and petition him, the Lord, and he shall answer you. And you shall cry, and the Lord will say to you, 
here I am. Then shall your spiritual light, your salvation, your great righteousness, the glory spiritually of your salvation and belief in him will rise up, come out forth, shine out of you of the Lord with no obscurity in it, no darkness, no defilement from the land of the kingdom of darkness. And your darkness that was in you, your ignorance, will no longer be dark, for you will now be as bright as the noon day. And you, yes you, shall be called the spiritual repairer, the renewer, the rebuilder of the spiritual breach, the spiritual separation the brokenness between God and all spiritual persons, humanity, the spiritual restore of the ancient spiritual past, the ways to think, to live from, to believe in, not the ways of the world. As Pastor Deborah's teaching, you'll become a teacher. Then shall your spiritual light this is where Pastor Deborah's at. And my righteousness and my salvation shall spiritually break forth as the morning light, like I'm doing to you right now. It's coming forth, even in my dreams, even in my prayers, just sitting, doing nothing. My light is shining out. And your spiritual health, my healing and my strength shall spiritually spring forth speedily, quickly to you. Maybe you're on your deathbed. Maybe you are being burned alive, sacrificed. Maybe you're in the womb and you're being killed. Maybe you're on your deathbed and there is no time to lose to get to you. I will be able to spiritually, speedily get to you when I get in this position. And my spiritual righteousness, yours, your salvation, your right standing with God and his laws of the kingdom of heaven. They shall go before us, before Pastor Deborah, into the spiritual darkness of the world. The kingdom of heaven will travel with me. It's a government. It's a kingdom. It's a nation. It's a country. And I'm a king in it here on earth. And my words and my decrees and my prayers and my petition, they will go forth. My radiance and light, he is saying, will go before you. All nations will hear of you when you get here through prayer and fasting, the Lord's way. And the glory and the presence of the Lord shall be my rear guard, my protection. And shall be my shepherd when I lay down asleep or I'm doing other things, driving in the car, walking, and I'm having to think on earthly things. He's going to protect me from accidents, murders, killings. He'll put angels about me. Then shall you, O spiritual person, you will delight yourself in the Lord. Once you are unyoked from all that burdens you, holds you back, ties you down, not as the world says or your religion or your faith, but as he directs you. And you start helping other people to be unyoked from memories and bitterness and anger and unforgiveness. I just had to tell a precious seven-year-old child I'm doing ministry with, She's upset with her parents because they are trying to force her to overcome her fears against her will. And she doesn't like that, and it makes her sad that they would do that, and she doesn't know why they would do that. I said, because that's all they know to do. She said her father was taking parenting lessons. She didn't say her mama was. Her mama is too much like her mama. Well, that's how we were raised, so that's how I'm going to raise you. Get over it, is her attitude. Now, she has lots of problems. She's actually seeing a psychiatrist. She has lots of deep 
issues from her childhood that she is bringing into this parenting of this seven-year-old. But I told the seven-year-old she must forgive them and love them. They're only doing what they know to do, and they have they do not have knowledge. They do not understand. But to help her overcome her fears of many things, God was there for her. And if she worked with God willingly, he would help her. She has a wonderful pastor that's speaking good words into her life. She has some spiritual encouragers in her Sunday school that's helping her. But she did not speak kindly of her parents. She's seven years old. She knows she has some fears and she needs to overcome them. She told me she had a fear of this remote little vacuum cleaner, the noise. But she figured out how to overcome it. She put some headsets on. But she overcomes a lot of her fears with other noises that are safe to her. But I'm trying to help her to understand. Go to God. Pray to Him. Forgive your parents, for they know not what they do. And so she will start delighting herself in the Lord. And then the Lord will cause you to ride and fly. You will be carried like Pastor Deborah's. You will travel. You will have authority and dominion in the high spiritual places of kingship, royalty, rulership, and leadership. You will be the head of the kingdom of heaven on earth and over your own flesh, your soul, and your physical body. You will have great rulership if you get there. You will rule your own body. You'll tell your tongue you can't have that. You will tell your body we aren't going to do that. You will tell your eyes closed. Don't look at that. And eventually it will work into your dreams and your spirit. And you will be a king over the earth. And over all the world and what's in it. Nature will bow to you. It is under great stress. It is subjugated to this Satan, this adversary of God. It has to do his bidding. But that wasn't the case. All of nature was to answer to Pastor Deborah, to all the kings of the kingdom of heaven. But if you don't know you're a king, if you have not prayed and fasted off the world and other stuff, and not grown up and matured from being a prince, and you are not released by your father yet, God in heaven, Nature will not answer you. They will not be with you. You cannot petition him yet. You're still a child and need to be under teachers and tutors. But one day, if you keep growing and learning, you will be released and you will be powerful on earth. And then... The Lord will spiritually feed you. He will nourish you. That's what I was telling that little seven-year-old. With the spiritual heritage of Jacob, your new spiritual identity, you will be a prince, a royal priesthood, a prince of Israel, a prince of peace, a prince of God, of the kingdom of heaven, with your spiritual fields, at your beck and call. All the angelic beads will be there for you. You will have riches and glory of agape love to share. You will bring joy and peace to other spirits. Your words will be comforting. You will have the wisdom and the knowledge and the understanding. And you will have this wisdom, this peace and joy. You'll be able to go into satanic meetings. You'll be able to stand up in front of people and preach the word of God in love and joy. You'll be able to be taken in the spirit where the spirits are. You'll be able to ask for airplanes flown by angels. You'll be asked God to, to show his glory by having a Game Boy play without batteries. You will ask God to send down ladders from heaven and to help orphans, to fix water, Build daycares, build schools where the world cannot help them. You will ask, you will petition, and he will say, I am here. You will not have prayers of the flesh. 
You will not have prayers that are routine and just rote. You will not just memorize things. If God tells you don't go to prayer today, stay home and be with him, you will obey. There's much for you to do and gain through the right prayer and fasting. Pastor Deborah learned that. And then I, the Lord, will make you to nurse, to drink from, be a godly soul within yourself, to have a positive, glorious soul tie, relationship to him through his word, bonded and yoked to him through his word, through a relationship of father and son, father and child. Most gods do not have children. In the ancient history, they did. A god would come down and have sex with a female, and a child would be born. And they would be a son or a daughter of a god. But it seems like a lot of the gods don't do that anymore, because they might feel there is a rival here on earth trying to take their place. Mm Mm-hmm. Now, there are fights over who's going to be the prophet of a god and whose beliefs are going to be uh, the foremost and paramount of a nation. Oh, that goes on all the time. Oh, yeah. What denomination and what thing are we going to use? We had major battles on the earth between Catholicism, where the Pope, his word was it. And you had to go through him, the priest, and you had no direct contact with this God, Christ Jesus. And you had to pray to his mama, Mother Mary, because they believed that God was still the God of the old Bible, angry. And you had to go through Mother Mary. And you had to count beads. Some people believe spinning wheels, doing all kinds of chants, taking drugs, getting in all kinds of yoga positions just to worship a God. He says, that's not going to happen. You don't do that when you're a father with a child. You just love them. They love you. You have a special relationship, an intimate one, not sexual. And you don't take advantage of your father. And you don't try to manipulate your mother. A lot of children do that. They play their parents against each other. You don't do that with God. And God doesn't take advantage of you. He doesn't abuse you. He doesn't force anything on you against your will. He will allow your decisions to form circumstances. And he will put people and billboards and television to get you to come to him. But he isn't going to allow you to be forced by swords, torture, give up this or you die. That's not God, not the God of the Bible. It is a God, all right. It's the God of the kingdom of darkness, Satan. He will force you to worship him as God in heaven, but it's really him. So he is saying, you'll be yoked to me. You'll be married to me, one and intimate with me. And I will give you rest and peace and honey and love and milk. I will pour out my agape love into you and it will bring forth to you out of rocks where you didn't think they would come. They will be my words of spirit and life. When you're in wilderness, times of darkness, they call it the dark night of the soul. I will bring forth my words to you on your deathbed. When you're having out-of-body experiences from abuse, When you don't think you can carry on one more time. In your dreams, you're being attacked by horrific, demonic things that are trying to eat you and rape you. I will come forth to you like water out of a rock. And my words will come to you no matter where you are, no matter what is happening to you, no matter where you go. Death and life cannot stop him. There is nothing, no government, no politics, no jail, no dungeon deep enough that he cannot reach you. You could be in a trance, have multiple personalities, 
be out of your body, be on your way to hell. He'll send Pastor Deborah into hell itself to get you. You go read my 72 virgins with the Sonira brothers. There's no place God cannot send you once you get here with him. Pastor Deborah saw that to reach humanity for God. And I, the Lord, he says, will give you my oil of my light of life for your lamp. That's words, truth, and knowledge, and wisdom in the Holy Spirit. I will anoint you with the Holy Spirit. I will give you strength and fire to be my witness in your spiritual heart. So you will always have my light before you and my own heart. Isaiah 61 and 62, and my thoughts and my ways, they will be with you as you go. And I want you to remember, these are the stories of Pastor Deborah, her journey she went through, and this was one section, fasting and prayer, the Lord's way, and what spiritual results would come from my heart And my desire to fast and pray the Lord's way and not the way of the world. And it took a while and I went through the word. And I hope that you have learned something from this School of Light educational series on prayer and fasting the Lord's way. Go back and look at all the videos. We need you to learn this. Practice it. Get hold of these words. Drink them in. Eat them in. Be willing. Humanity is waiting for you. They are depending on you to learn, to get unoppressed from your bondages and yokes. They can't get help without you. And if you go slow, they die on the vine, and I have to go get them. We need good laborers out here with pure hearts spiritually. So I want to end this series now. Prayer and Fasting from the Kingdom of Agape Love, Volume 1. We are going to be starting in the next one. Let me see what it is. We are going to be doing Isaiah 61 and 62. And it's titled, A father's heart, a father's desires, a father's prophetic words. This was foundational. These two sets of scriptures were foundational in my life. In learning about this father, this God, this king and Lord and creator, what he wanted done on earth through Pastor Deborah, You must know it. You must pray it. You must pray it over people that it will be fulfilled. Because we learn that God only watches over, protects, and fulfills His words. Not yours, not your denominations, not a prophet's, but His word. And I had to learn what His desires were. So I learned that in Isaiah 61. And that will be the next School of Light Educational Series, A Father's Heart, A Father's Desires, A Father's Prophetic Word. We will start with lesson number one, and we will work our way through scripture by scripture till we finish. So I have enjoyed teaching you about prayer and fasting the Lord's way, the way that Pastor Deborah had to learn it, how to come out of the world and learn things his way, to help people his way, which was his heart. Bless you, and Father, take all these words and implant them and help them to grow and learn, to learn how to pray and fast your way so that they can be laborers in your field, helping you to fulfill your word on earth in the realm of the Spirit. In the realm of the kingdom of heaven. In the name of Jesus. Amen. All right. I'll see you in the next educational series. And we'll begin with lesson one. Bye. 
Bye, everybody. Enjoy the garden. Have a great time. And we'll see you again. Bye-bye. Thank you for listening and watching this video. It is an honor and a pleasure to have you stopped by today and watch. This is Pastor Deborah, and I hope you come again and watch many, many more videos and learn and grow spiritually and hear how she has helped people spiritually the Lord's way for many, many years. Come again. Watch another one. And we welcome you to be a subscriber to the channel, to make comments. And if you wish to contact Pastor Deborah, please email her at her email address for the ministry at Pastor Deborah at Agape Love is here dot org. You can also see these videos on Twitter and on the website in the many different sections that they are put into. Enjoy, and it was once again an honor to have you watch and listen. Thank you, and come again to another video of Agape Love, Love is Here Ministries, a ministry of helping people the Lord's way that Pastor Deborah has been doing for many, many years. Love always and forever, Pastor Deborah.